Hi guys. Been out vape hunting again. Well, I went out charity shopping but didn't find anything in the charity shops. But I did pick up two vapes in the park. And also my daughter gave me this one, which she has replaced. It is actually a rechargeable one. So we'll have a peek inside that if we can. And we'll have a look at them. I suppose we might look at this one first. Is that GOS or something on there? I've got written on the bottom. Focus. 1500 milliamp hour. 5.55 watt hours. Doesn't want to just pop apart, not from that end anyway. What about the other end? Nope. Rattles a little bit. Get on my big pairs of pliers. straight to these. Not really anything to get hold of there. I think this is going to be a one-way trip, which isn't a problem because she doesn't want it back. It doesn't want to come apart easily either. Nothing at that end. It's going to have to be the plastic end then. No, nope, that's not moving easily. Going to have to be a bit more forceful with it, obviously. What we might do is just measure its output just with an ordinary meter. So this will be without the load. see it I suppose might be a good idea okay we'll assume we've got a touch there and touch there uh, to get something briefly let's the button 2.6 2.5 so if that's a lithium iron or a lipo you'd be expecting a bit more than that so it's certainly discharged I'll stick it on charge and then we might go a bit um, animal and actually smash that off but I'll put it on charge while we have a look at those and see what it comes up to so we'll just look at that again it looks like looks like the center is positive so touch that on there touch that on there where's the button can't find it touch there try not 
to short everything out while we're doing it. Come on. We'll go negative then, because I couldn't do it that way around. Right, yeah, 2.1. I mean, 2.6 is the slowest you really want to go on a LiPo. So that's well down. But we will put it on charge and see what happens. Right, this one's been on charge for about 20 minutes or so. Mm, daughter said it got hot. It did feel a little bit warm. Yeah, it's a little bit warm. Let's see if we've managed to get any charge back into it. Again, we'll do it the wrong way round. So this shows us a negative voltage. Press the button. Uh, really? Is that all we're getting? That's awful. Because that may, yeah, that may be a limited voltage. It may not be giving us the full 3.7 volts out to uh, this bit, which would be the bit that would be heating up the vape. I'm surprised it's that low, though. GOS. Capacity 1500 milliamp hour. 5.5 watt hours. Uh, in the previous video, I did briefly try and get it apart, but it wouldn't move, so I went on and took a different one apart. In this video, we'll try a bit harder. It will be a one-way thing. We're not going to be putting it back again. Oh, Inokin. Didn't notice that in the previous video. I've measured across the top there, and well, I might as well do it again for this video. We're not getting very much voltage out of there. Now, I don't know what to expect. I would have thought I'd have seen the full 3.7 volts, 4.2 volts freshly charged, but it may, it may be limited to go to whatever it is that it's actually supposed to work on. So, connecting on there, make sure we're not shorting things out. I did put it on charge for about 20 minutes on there press the button oh now end of the last vi video I couldn't get anything out of it at all so I must have been I don't know whether I was shorting it out by pushing that I might have been pushing the um, crocodile clip in too far and actually shorting the whole thing out well that's not far well that's a good charge isn't it five point I wonder if it's a, a 2S rather than a 1S. When you charge it, USB charger in there. It's rattling in there. I'll try a bit harder, see if we can get the end off. One end or the other. I would guess the battery's in this end. And, you know, we got the circuitry in this end. So we'll just try a bit harder trying to get this off. Doesn't want to come off. 
Ah, done it. A little click. And it's loosened it. Right. Well, that's not as not as dramatic as I thought it was going to be. Although it still doesn't want to drop out. I would guess it just hasn't got long enough wires to drop right out. But in that case, how do they get it in there? That's almost 18650 size. Hmm. Hadn't thought this through. How are we going to get it out if it doesn't want to come out? And how did they get it in there? Because clearly there's not enough wire there for it to just drop, drop right the way out. No, that's as far as I can pull it. So I'll probably be disconnecting the wires next. Okay, I'll try and do the same at this end. Crush it a little bit. To distort it. Just in case you're wondering, this isn't a re repair, tear down and repair. This is just a one-way ticket. I might be imagining things, but I'm sure that's moved a tiny bit. It's definitely moving out a little bit. There we go. Got it. Got it. Now what? Now you got it. What are you going to do with it, Grandad? Well, we can look inside. How do we get it out? Because clearly that bit is going to stop it sliding out. We have to distort it.
I mean, truth is, I could just crush it right up, crush it all the way along the side. Because like I said, we're not going to be putting this back together again when we've finished. I don't want to short anything out in there by reaching inside. But I bet you could twist it and it'd come out. I hope my hands weren't entirely in the way there, preventing you seeing what was happening. Yeah, well there we go. Yeah, it looks like I reckon the the sequence of operation is that would go in. That would go in, drop down in place, and then that one goes in to lock it all in place. That goes on top and locks it all in place. So if I'd have reached in there and pulled that one out, it would have all come out easily. So we're talking about that piece being pushed in there, rising up like that, and expanding the whole thing to grip in there. So if you knew what you were doing, you'd reach in and pull that one out, and then it'd all come out. 
Well, there you go. That was fun. And we got another battery. Oh, that looks like it's got damp. That may be what our problem is. Yeah, I reckon that's why it was overheating. We got, looks like corrosion around there. So not that I care about trying to resurrect it. But there's something gone on just there. Unless that's some sort of thermal paste, but... I may be jumping to conclusions, but that definitely don't look quite right. Focus. Well, that might just be thermal paste. Might be thermal paste or it might be something has leaked. An expert would be able to tell you. I can't. Still, that's interesting. So we got another one apart. And this one... 3.7 volts. 5.5 watt hours. Eighteen five hundred. Oh, where are we? Sorry, out of focus, or out of off screen. Yeah, eighteen five hundred. So eighteen millimeter diameter, fifty millimeters long, and the O on the end indicates it's a cylinder shaped battery rather than a flat battery. Flat as in shaped flat. That's possibly the date. Possibly, 210304. And if we press that, we get pretty LEDs. Right, well, that'll go in me containment box, along with the others. So that was a GOS Inokin. Uh, final thing. Let's just measure straight on the battery. Yeah, a little bit low. 3.168 and we were getting five point something out the front so it's obviously got a boost converter in there let's go on the front touch that on there press the button uh, nothing what is going on That makes it look more like it's my meter playing up, doesn't it? I think my meter's playing up. Oh, 
how silly. Right, different meter. Three point eight five directly off the battery. And then off the other side, which is going to be difficult to do again. Let's change the lead. Click that on there. Back on there. Nothing. What is going on? Oh, there we go. 5.48. So yeah, there's obviously a boost converter there on that circuit board that's going from the 3.7 in to 5.4 out. Yeah. Just for the sake of it, let's go back to this fella. Yeah, definitely got a problem with me meter. Probably just needs a fresh battery in it. Yeah, that's the battery out of that meter. Six volts. Not surprising, it's given me funny readings. So I better replace that. Ninth of the second. Is that 2001 by any chance I've written on there? Well, I guess that is probably why there was a little battery sign up there all the time that I was using it. <laughs> well, now that we've got fresh batteries in there, or a fresh battery in there, we'll just test again. So, there we go, 5.4 volts. 5.5 volts on that side and going in off the battery 3.86 so yeah I was confusing myself by having a meter with a dead battery in it One of those things you really need to check every so often. Thanks for watching. If you want more information, check down below in the video description. If you like this video, you might like this one up here. And if you want to subscribe, you can check out my channel over here. Up here is my latest video on my channel. And down here is a video playlist associated with the video you've just watched. Thanks again for watching.